Welcome back to Coding Shorts. I'm Sean Wildermuth. In today's episode, I want to really dig into the idea of doing background processing in ASP.NET. The idea here is there's some long-lived processes that have to happen outside the scope of a single HTTP call. And this is sort of the bedrock of what we think about as a message-based system, right? You call in some API, it throws a message in a queue, some other process grabs that queue and goes. And that's a great architectural guidance for larger systems, especially microservices. But there's a lot of cases where you need to be able to do it on a single server. You may be employing individual ASP.NET projects out to a bunch of different individual machines or containers for a particular client. And I ran into this recently where deploying an entire microservice at a particular client site just didn't make a lot of sense. We wanted to support it inside of ASP.NET. This isn't a replacement for having a real distributed system at all, but it does help you handle this. Let's take a look. So I'm just in Visual Studio Code. I could be in Visual Studio too, but I'm just going to do it kind of easily here. And I have a startup project that really is doing almost nothing. All it has is a one API and it returns hello world. And I think we all know how well that should be working. What I'd like to do is have it kick off some process that I actually do something with. What's important to me is that when we do this process, we don't just return that the process has been completed. What we really want to do, and I'm going to change this to a post, is I'm just gonna return accepted and give it some message. Process has been queued. Doesn't matter what that process is. Now on the face of it, we could use a hosted service or a background worker, whichever you wanna think about it as, to do this. The background worker lives for the life cycle of the application. I wanna be able to fire one or more of these off in the process of doing things and not have to really manage having a number of these and managing start and stop and what about shutdown. And so I suggest to use something called quartz.net, which I really like. And what we can do here is just .net, add package, and I'm going to use quartz.asp.net core. There is the quartz assembly that works in a bunch of different scenarios, but this one specifically has some wrappers that are specific to hosting inside of ASP.NET Core. So let's go ahead and add that. Now that we have that, we just need to register it. And we're going to do that with our builder, services, add quartz, and we'll need the using quartz namespace. And this is going to take a little configuration object or Lambda. All I'm going to do with this is specify how large a batch I want. So how many of these can I have concurrently running on a particular machine? This is arbitrary, but I'm just picking a number so you can see how you would add that to the service collection. We also need to add it as a hosted service. So this is Quartz running underneath as a separate process that is handling each of these jobs. Just like we saw before, I'm going to want to configure this in a little different way as well. And what I want to do is I want to say, wait for jobs to complete. This is specific to it being hosted in that if you try to shut down ASP.NET, not just kill it, but shut it down, this will wait until any of the jobs in the Quartz queue are done before it actually shuts down ASP.NET. That allows it to gracefully close those instead of just stop them. So now that we've sort of put in the wiring, there is no use here. What we really want to be able to do is, is create a job. A job is something that can be reused to actually do some work. So I'm going to create a new file here. I'm going to call it sumjob.cs. I'm just going to put in the name, same namespace, class, call it some job, and I'm going to derive it from iJob. And this is from Quartz, so we're going to add that namespace. And let's go ahead and implement the interface. Unsurprisingly, it just gives you some context and then some code we want to run. And it's always a good idea to have a try-catch in this particular case because you want to be able to end gracefully. And as part of the class, I'm also going to want a logger. So I'm just going to use iLogger some job. Let's call it logger. So that here we can say logger dot log error failed to run job. But we want to actually have some work here. So I'm going to say await. And because I did that, it added the async up there for me. And I'm just going to say task dot delay. And I'm going to say, let's wait for one second. And then just use the logger to log information. We'd actually be able to do all the sorts of things you might want to do in here. But I just want to say job is complete, right? I've done some work, I've waited a second, logging some information, and then this job is over. Let's go ahead and make this a public class, just in case. And now we need to go over here and program, and we actually want to do something with our execution here, right? We could be returning accepted process is working, and that's all good. 
Let's put a semicolon over there. But we want to actually create this job and then queue it up. And what we're going to need to do that is a I schedule factory. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is get a schedule. We'll see in a minute that we could schedule these jobs any way we want, but we're going to do it as simple as possible. We're going to call schedule factory dot get scheduler. This is just so we can actually schedule things. And then we're going to want to actually create the job. And so we're going to say the details of my job are await job builder create. And I'm going to give it the name of my job, some job. I don't think this needs an await. And I'm going to say build. Now there's other things I can do in between creating the job and building it is like I could say give it an identity or give it payload data, which we'll do in a minute. But I'm just going to build this. I just want to run it purely. And I'm going to want to create something called a trigger. And this is what kicks off a particular job. And for this, it's a trigger builder, create, start now. You can see the conventions here that they're working with is I'm just going to create a trigger that says I want to execute this job at a particular time. Now this could have been with cron schedule or other things that could kick it off. But for me, I just want to start this process and go about our day. And I do that by saying schedule, schedule job. And here I'm just going to pass in the details and the trigger. And so very few lines of code, I'm going to grab my sum job, I'm going to make it execute. And every time I do this post, we should be able to see that. So if we run this, and in the debug console, we can actually see that it's starting the lifetime, all the other things. And it's also saying that the court schedule has been started, though no work has really been done yet. So let's open up a test here, and let's execute this test. Now this returned accepted, and then sometime later we got this job complete. So the work actually did finish itself. This is using Quartz some job, and job is complete, and then my actual information message is coming back out. And that's sort of the idea here. Now if I send this multiple times, you're going to see that it's going to slow slowly complete each one of those. It doesn't worry about that there are others already running. It's going to simply queue them up, ask them to execute. And of course, at the end of that job, if you want to reconcile, like have someone check to see the status or the error messages or the resulting report, it's a good example. You're going to have to write code that does that, save to some data store or cache or whatever that you can check at later. This isn't keeping that connection open. It's just starting that job. So we can also add something called a job data map. We're going to create a new one of these. And this is just going to take a dictionary. And then I'm just going to create name for the key. And we're going to give it some value. This could be a whole object. But in my case, I'm just going to say, give me my name. And then I have this little map of the data that I'm going to pass to it. And so all I do when I create the job is I say set job data to be our copy of that data. So I'm kicking this off. I'm giving it some specific data. In fact, let's change this. Let's add an ID here. Let's add it to our object here. Let's go ahead and say ID. I'm passing in something that is actual state. The rest of this stays the same. I'm just adding some data and then some job. I can say ID equals context dot job detail dot job data map. This ends up just being a dictionary, so I should be able to say name. And let's go ahead and throw our ID in there so we can see whatever we send is actually being used here. So let's run this again. And here I'll go ahead and put number one to make the most boring one. And there it says job number one is complete. Let's make this 42. 42 is complete and 999. So by using Quartz, I've created a simple way to actually do this. So I hope you don't take away that I think you should use Quartz and have a lots and lots of background processing. But occasionally this is going to be needed, especially when you're not using something like microservices. You might be doing a modular monolith or even just a monolith because you have code that you've been working with for a long time and you deploy it to one server and want to go about your day. So instead of having to host a queue of some sort or a message bus and then some process that's going to be triggered and pull them off, this is a way to do it in memory inside of ASP.NET Core for those cases where you really need it. For building a large system that needs to have tracking and durability, you can do some of that with Quartz, but I would suggest that unless you have a really good reason of not expanding out and doing it in a distributed fashion, that you don't. But there are going to be cases where this is useful. So I hope what you've gotten from this is a cool way to do this without having to really pull your hair out because creating your own hosted service is great, but then you have to manage all of that communication and triggering and all of that. Quartz does that work for you. Again, if you've gotten this far, appreciate a like and subscribe. I'll see you next time on Coding Shorts.